Hi everyone and welcome to the 19th edition of the group exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cell here at the Hanover Messe 2013. For those that are not familiar with our public forum, please I invite you to come and have a seat. Drinks are on the house, we offer coffee, tea, juice, our, our waitresses will just come to uh, serve you. Just Also, it is a public forum so you're welcome to ask questions throughout the interview. Uh, raise your hand and I'll come and see you with a microphone. Uh, we will discuss with Air Liquide perspective and challenges in the fuel cell and hydrogen sector by 2020. Please help me welcome the Managing Director of Advanced Technologies at Air Liquide, Dr. Antoine Massas. Thank you. Please have a seat. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Um, I think the first thing that would be very important to talk about right off the bat is um, Air Liquide has created a new entity, and I would like you to tell us about that, please. Thank you. Thank you for the, the welcome and the opportunity to, to have the, the floor here. First of all, I would like to apologize on behalf of uh, Pierre-Etienne Franc, who is heading the uh, advanced businesses and technologies at, at Air Liquide in Europe. Unfortunately, he was not able to join today, so I'm replacing him. Uh, Second remark I would like to do, I hope you, you appreciate the effort I made to be at the official colors of the fair. was not completely planned, but uh, anyway. It'll so make good pictures. Yeah. <laughs> That's to be in the, in the leaflet next year, you know. <laughs> so indeed, you have uh, mentioned it. Um, Alikin, as you know, uh, has been taking part in the hydrogen business as a whole for more than 40 years. We have been involved really deeply in the hydrogen energy developments since now two decades. And we have created last year, specifically in Germany, a dedicated subsidiary, which is called Air Liquid Advanced Technologies GmbH, to uh, develop the technology here in Germany and to address the emerging markets we are going to, to talk about in a few minutes. So this entity uh, is based in Dusseldorf, have some dedicated staff, and we will really focus on advanced business and technologies in three different domains. So the first domain is space activities. As you may know, Early Kid is part of the European Space Adventure for more than 25 years. We are designing and manufacturing the cryogenic uh, tanks of the Ariane rocket, and uh, there, were, there were lots of uh, political discussions in the last years, and the partnership between Astrium and Air Liquid for these activities, for manufacturing the hydrogen cryogenic tanks for the Ari Ariane rocket, will know a new step in the coming years, we are opening a new facility in Bremen in Germany following the increase of um, the German funding in the European Space Programme and we have this new facility in Bremen together with Hasrium to further develop these technologies within the framework of the, the evolution of Ariane 5, so Ariane 5 midlife evolution. This is not completely um, linked, of course, with the fuel cells and hydrogen business, but that's also important to mention that we, we, we are launching something new in Germany and closely linked with the hydrogen technologies. Second field, and I will be very brief about that, are biogas activities. We are designing and manufacturing biogas purification units for upgrading the biogas and obtain biomethane that could be injected in the grid. And the third pillar for this new entity are, of course, hydrogen energy activities. W where are the main focus? Because obviously we're in the fuel cell and hydrogen a group exhibit, so we would like to know which market you're really focusing on for your hydrogen pillar, part of this new advanced technology division. Of course, so we, we will do in Germany what we are already doing elsewhere uh, in the world. So address emerging markets, among which uh, power supply from fuel cell. We have a dedicated subsidiary in France called Axan Manufacturing uh, Fuel Cells. 
address the market of the forklifts. We just had this uh, round table around the forklift initiatives and we strongly believe that it will be a key market in the near future. For those who are more interested in technical details, I warmly and strongly recommend you to assist in a couple of minutes at noon uh, to the presentation of my colleague Warren uh, Borough there. Uh, in yeah. the technical forum at noon. So, so Warren will be presenting in a technical forum, which is located just behind us in this corner. Uh, at noon, he will be presenting some of the details and the technical details of the fleet forklift uh, servicing. Um, so I invite you to join them. Yeah, very interesting. So please join there. Um, we also contribute developing the energy storage technologies from, from uh, renewable energy. We have also to expand our green hydrogen capacities in Germany because, as you may know, we have huge quantities of conventional hydrogen in Germany. We want to decrease our carbon footprint and we, we will expand in the coming years our production capacity to have more green hydrogen available on the market. We are part of some major mobility programs. Uh, Air Liquide signed the letter of intention with a couple of partners last year uh, in June 2012, announcing that we committed to build 10 refueling stations within the clean energy partnership throughout Germany, with the objective, as you know, to have 50 hydrogen refueling stations available in the country by 2015, and this will be the first skeleton of the hydrogen distribution uh, infrastructure in the country. So out of those 50 stations, Air Liquid has partner and say, we will provide 10, is that correct? Absolutely. Well, actually, a bit more than 10, 10, 12, let's say. Because we have also some European funded projects. And finally, we are an acti active partner uh, in the H2 Mobility Initiative, which is the initiative gathering all uh, the industrial companies interested in building the refueling infrastructure in Germany by 2030. And we are one of the, the core partners, uh, together with uh, Linde, Shell, Total, Daimler, for this, uh, for this initiative. And we are actively working on that. So I think you gave us a really good overview of the perspective of this new advanced technology division at Air Liquide and what we're going to see in the next couple of years at what your focus are. Could you now tell us, as per subject, what are the challenges Air Liquide are going to face over um, the next couple of years with this new division? So the challenges are numerous. I think they are not really specific to Air Liquide, but these are the challenges of the whole sector. First of all, I of, would like... Of hydrogen fueling or fuel cell and hydrogen? Fuel cells and hydrogen. Overall? Yeah, overall. First of all is uh, sector cooperation. And um, I'm very glad to have seen in the program that, that my, uh, my colleague, uh, Markus Bachmeyer van Linde, who will uh, speak just after me, has entitled his presentation, Why Cooperation is so important. So you will have to wait for a few minutes to know why it is so important. And I strongly share uh, this point of view. It is really important. It, was, it is actually the first bullet point I had on my list. So important to tackle the first mover disadvantage. Important to increase the sector efficiency with collaboration partnerships. Important, and this is the only way to accelerate the market introduction. You may know that in economics, the academic research um, in the 80s has worked on the measuring the efficiency created by collaboration processes between firms for technology development. And they have shown that it is by far more efficient for all the parties, all the stakeholders, to have cooperation mechanisms for technology development and for market introduction. Then when the technology is ready, when the market is there, 
there so is of course no so need you're basically of saying that cooperation is a lot stronger in advancement in the overall market than competition yeah and trying to beat your, your best competitor and and, and 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 that's a clear focus of the sector um, as it is shown by some initiatives like H mobility for instance or the clean energy partnership and those who are active in the in the fuel cell energy sector uh, know that very well um, so I would like to, to give one example of, uh, about the sector cooperation. Uh, this is the joint undertaking for fuel cells and hydrogen. The joint undertaking is the European platform for fuel cell and hydrogen technologies. The first joint undertaking has been uh, created in 2008 and it's ending now. And we are in the process with the European Commission to negotiate the second joint undertaking for the period 2014-2020. So within the framework of the research program Horizon 2020. This is important to reinforce our benchmark capacity, to increase the credibility of the sector, to have a strong interface with the European Commission. As you know, there is money available for technologies at the European level and it's very important that the sector can have a single voice to speak with the European Commission, to negotiate with them so that we, we get the appropriate public support from, from, the, from the Commission. But obviously I doubt that sector co um, cooperation is the only challenge because if that was it, we've seen so many groups working together and we're still fighting to get this, this technology out there. So what other challenge do you foresee? So another challenge we have is to get the appropriate public support from all the, the stakeholders, from the European Commission, from the member states, from the regions. And I think this is a good opportunity here to thank the remarkable support of the German state and of the German regions which are doing a lot for developing the sector. And uh, as you know, Air Liquide is a group uh, with headquarters in Paris, uh, created in France. And we really see the difference between uh, France and Germany in that field. So I think that Really so thumbs up to Germany <laughs> yeah, no, for no, pushing the technology, really but now we need to get the other countries on board. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Absolutely. So Germany has a, a leader and pioneer role for, uh, for this technology. This is very good. Uh, as an industry, of course, uh, we are glad of this. We hope it will continue for, long, for a long time because it's absolutely needed, especially for all the infrastructure, refueling infrastructure projects. But uh, the start is, uh, is, is remarkable. And if there are some people from the German state or the German regions who have some contacts with their French colleagues, please also give them the message that they also have to increase their support for these technologies. We have a question from yes, the, the stage. So we'll Thank you. My name is Theo Holton. My company is uh, Green Hydrogen Consulting. And um, I'm interested in what makes you say that about Germany? Obviously, we've heard an announcement from Frau Merkel that there will be um, 50 hydrogen filling stations around the entire German motorway network. Um, do, do you think, are, are there other, other aspects of uh, German economy and w which offer support to hydrogen and fuel cells that you're thinking of, or is it simply that? And, and secondly, um, do you think that the EU needs to um, incentivize the take-up of hydrogen um, as a form, of either through um, incentivizing hydrogen transport and slash or incentivizing energy storage in general, which is important for the stability of our electricity grid, and also hydrogen as a form of energy storage on one scale and, and redirecting electricity renewable energy, variable renewable energy into transport as well. Um, so w what can be done by governments? Uh, p perhaps, um, I mean, can you think of uh, practical initiatives really that, that governments can do, such as 
you know, maybe insisting that all government vehicles are zero emission vehicles, for instance, or other initiatives? What do you think? I think there's threefold to this <laughs> yeah. question, so we'll get to the first part, um, it, where he would like to know how do you say that Germany is leading and why? Yeah, I, I, I think, first of all, um, there is really a strong spirit of innovation in Germany and um, yeah, people, industries are really to play this card of innovation, to develop new things. There is a strong engineering culture, of course, and uh, basically people are, are, are willing and are happy to test new technologies, to support them, to, to, to develop them, and this is very positive. Second part of your question, there is a clear uh, financial support fr from NOW and OV, so the German National uh, Funding Agency for Fuel Cells and Hydrogen. And, well, you can easily find the public uh, information which is available regarding all the funding sources uh, they are providing to the market and they are uh, supporting lots of different initiatives. To, uh, for your question regarding uh, Europe, yes, of course, the European Union has a strong role to play, and this is why we, together with the industry, are very active in the joint undertaking, and we believe that the joint undertaking and the industrial grouping of the joint undertaking should be the right interface with the European Commission and with the European Union to push for hydrogen and fuel cells technology. And a comment on that, if there are among you some industries which are in this business and which are not yet a member of the industrial grouping of the fuel cells and hydrogen joint undertaking, please become a member. This is very important for the credibility of the sector and to reinforce or wait uh, in the dialogue we have um, with the, the European Commission. And finally, uh, should we push for a stronger support in the field of transportation, mobility, refueling, energy storage, was part of your question. Yes, definitely yes. And we have been working since now one year with the European Commission on the priorities of the next uh, joint undertaking technology platform 2014-2020, and this pr the priorities, exactly the ones that you mentioned, uh, together with stationary applications, are at the heart of the development program. Well, sorry to cut you short. Actually, we're running out of time, um, and I don't want to cut on our next subject, which is really important. So what, what, what I will ask you, because we had a few other people with questions, I'll invite you to continue this discussion with uh, Dr. Antoine Mazas, just on the side or back at his booth, which is located at C58, which is at the back corner. And there's also their technical forum uh, coming up at noon, which you can assist at the back corner. So sorry to cut you short, but you can continue the, uh, the discussion on the side. Please help me thank... Uh, uh, Dr. Antoine Mazas for his time and thank his you. collaboration. Sorry, thank you very much.